everyone and welcome back here to another episode of Minecraft the first few days. Now I've headed back outside today because I want to give a quick uh, lesson in amongst other things navigation. Now here is where our cave, uh, our cave is from the last episode and presuming we don't get a creeper drown landing on our heads this time I'm going to carry on with our plan of uh, getting together armor and iron equipment and all the other goodies we can get from down there. But uh, I also want to take the opportunity to talk about a few of the ways about navigating and not getting lost and uh, keeping your way, finding your way home safely and all other fun things like that. The first thing I want to talk about is the, uh, the F3 key, which brings up a load of information on the screen. I'm not going to go into most of it just yet, but the one bit I want to talk about is the line that says X, Y, and Z. Okay, and this gives your location upon the map. Okay, X is uh, your coordination of one axis, Z is coordination of the other axis, and Z is how high or low you are. So as you can see, as I'm moving this way, my x value changes as I move this way, the z value changes as I move this way, the y value changes. So knowing that information, you can find your way back to any point whatsoever on the map just by walking around until the numbers line up. So the first thing I want to do here is remember where the map is, not the, where the, the tunnel entrance is rather. And I've done this in a number of ways. The first thing is I put a torch up here, which is going to make this easy to find in the darkness. Uh, if I was uh, thinking about this sensibly, I would probably take out a few of these trees as well. In fact, let's do that while we're thinking about it. Have I made an axe? No, I don't appear to have made an axe yet, so let's make ourselves an axe quickly. Uh, the first thing we're going to need here is a crafting table. Let's move that arrow out of the way. Come back, you lot. Come back. Here we go. Okay, so we'll pop that down there and we shall make ourselves a quick axe. An axe is made quite simply. Do I have any cobblestone? Yes, I do. There we go. An axe is made quite simply with three material and two sticks in that pattern there. So that's that. And we shall use this axe to clear away these trees here. So let's just get rid of these. And then if we do have to come and find this area again, it's going to be a bit easier to find that uh, that light. So that's a bit too high for us to go. So we'll pillar up there a little bit. Get the rest of the tree like that. Okay. And this will give us some material for working with later on. So that's one tree done. Let's go and get the other two quickly. And while we're doing that... We can talk about some other materials. Now, I, when I looked at my uh, my inventory earlier on, I saw that I have three string. Okay, let's get rid of that F3 quickly while I'm at it. Okay, so we have the three string there. And three string is one of the major components of a very important part of your arsenal uh, when playing Minecraft. And that is... What other trees do I want to get rid of? I want to get rid of this tree here, I think. Uh, it's a bow, so we'll make one of the a bow quickly before heading down. And I've also noticed I'm a wee bit low on food, so this chicken has just volunteered to become dinner. So we'll kill that off. Take uh, the chicken there. Let's have a quick look around, see if we can find any other any other meals quickly. Uh, meals can easily be made at this point just by running around looking for chickens, cows, pigs, sheep. Kill them, take their lovely meat, cook it up later on. Uh, there's nothing around here at the moment. So we're probably going to have to go a little bit further afield to get what we want. So the first thing I want to do here, I just want to make a bow quickly. And a bow is very easy to make. Let's make a couple of... Um, sticks and we basically make a bow shape so it's like that and it's like that and there you have a bow I tend to put the bow at the end there 
Uh, and while we're here, let's pick up this workbench. The workbench is wood, so the best thing to cut it down with is an axe. All right, just a quick run around quickly. Oh, is there any other way of doing something quickly? Just see if we can find any other creatures because our hunger bar is going down. Chickies. So, all right, chickens are interesting creatures. Uh, in they lay eggs, surprisingly enough. And uh, each chicken, and there's no gender in this game. Remember, each chicken will lay an egg once every ten minutes. And the eggs can be picked up and thrown, and they have a chance of creating uh, another chicken. Um, but you can also breed. Uh, two chickens together by giving them seeds. Put one down, let's go and get uh, whatever that dropped. There we go. Right, then swim up. Got the other chickens in this rather deep lake, or river rather. Got that. Chickens, when you kill them, they give you meat. And they give you feathers, and the meat is obviously uh, useful for eating. But the feathers are useful because they're one of the three components you need to make arrows. And the other two being gravel, which we'll try to pick some up uh, during the course of this episode, and sticks, of which we have rather a lot. Let's get rid of these, because they are blocking the view. We'll talk about how to pick those safely later on. So it's getting dark. We have a bit of meat, so let's just pop in here and carry on with our explanation for resources. Now, one of the things I, I, I like to do when running about here is leave myself markers. Now, there's a fairly obvious marker we want here to let us know this is the way back up, but uh, uh, there's other things that I like to do, which is, for example, when I come to a junction, uh, if I find a junction here, do I find a junction here? No, I don't find a junction here, but let's grab that coal, uh, because that's one of the resources we are desperately going to need at the start. Now, we got over half a stack, but every little helps, really, doesn't it? And we have an iron pickaxe, so this won't take us very long at all. We'll treat this like a junction. When I come to a junction, I like to leave myself an indication of where the way out was. And I tend to do that like this. I put down a block and I put down a torch telling me where I need to go in order to go back to the entrance. So if I'm coming back here, block, torch, okay, I need a note. I need, no, I need to go this way, which uh, gives me a clear indication and I will be dropping these down wherever we find a junction down here so if worse comes to worse we can easily find a way back. I'll get rid of that because it's blocking the view. So let's start talking about food quickly and before we do that let's get back to our, our base here. Just leave myself a quick indication of where the way out is. and go back to where we left um, our crafting bench and furnace at the end of last episode so grab this stick the chicken in and stick a lump of coal in um, when it comes to cooking animals uh, one lump of coal will cook eight so if I could find another two raw chicken before that runs out, I could get them in there with one lump of coal. All right, let's talk about food and hunger quickly. Now, if you look at the bottom of the screen here, um, above all the tools and items, there's uh, look, look like uh, rather crude little chicken legs, and they're, they're bouncing up and down. And that's because uh, my hunger is depleting. And if your hunger is depleting, if there is an empty chicken leg there at any point, your, your hit points will not regenerate. So it is very important to keep your, some food on your bar, make sure you've always got something to eat, 
just keep that full and then any damage you take will uh, regenerate automatically and it's also worth pointing out if that bar ever gets down to zero you start taking damage until you die so let's just take the last of that excellent and what else do we want I think I need some torches here so let's just make those quickly some sticks and coal each each stick and coal combination makes us four torches, so they're really quite cheap. And I think we're getting a bit of junk here as well. So before we explore any further, let's put this chest down, open it up, and just put stuff in we're not going to immediately want. So we want saplings and that stuff. So I definitely want to take this stuff with us, but there's no need for it to be in our inventory while we're running around. So let's get rid of that. Let's keep our one arrow safe. And we should probably use something do something with that iron, but let's uh let's explore a little bit further and see what we can get. And the trick with uh exploring is to if you have the opportunity to get down deep, get down deep, because the deeper you go, the better the items you're likely to find. So So we're at junction again, let's leave ourselves an indication of which way is up. And let's just start running around looking for some resources. Right, so loads and loads of coal here. I probably won't take all of this immediately. I might come back for some of that later on. But, uh, let's forge onwards and see what else we can find. Uh, and some iron here. Let's grab that. And loads of that. Excellent. Lava there we've got to be very, very careful with. Now that's going to block us going down there. But the interesting thing about lava is, and this is the point where a creeper dropped on me the last time I tried explaining this, if you can find the source block for the lava, and pop another block in its place then the lava just goes away so we shall wait for that just to uh, go down the bottom and we will explore that afterwards let's have a look quick look around here first so here we go this is a rare item this is gold let's have a quick look how deep we are we're deeper than I thought we're level 24 we go back and look at the the Y value that means we're 24 blocks up from the bottom which means we're actually down in a layer where some decent materials can be found gold diamond redstone lapis um, diamond is going to be incredibly rare still but uh, it's still common enough to find it so junction here put a light down showing the way back oh there's some iron there and looks like some yummy stuff around here so let's have a quick run around here grab this iron we're going to be able to equip ourselves nicely which is going to tie in very well with our plans to uh, get out of this area and if anyone's wondering yes I am still a little bit hoarse from all the live streaming I've been doing recently how are we doing for I think we can do a little bit can you hear that zombie? Probably the other side of this wall. Let's see if we can identify where. Let's try it down here quickly. And it takes us down even further, but there's some very malleable materials down there, so let's take a little bit of time and cautiously explore this area. There's the zombie we were hearing, and if you remember from the last lesson, let zombies come towards you. That way you are very unlikely to take damage. The problem with this is that it gives zombies time to call all their friends, but zombies, if you are cautious, are very easy to defeat. 
So down here, let's just drop a couple of torches just to show where we are. Ah, creeper. Now there's two ways of dealing with a creeper. The first one is to back around a corner. Hit it and back around a corner. Of course, the problem with that is you've got to be quick enough. And which is why I prefer the other method of dealing with creepers, which we'll show the next time we see a creeper. But we have a junction here. We want to let people know that we they, they need to go up here, so we'll put down a block. And we shall put down a torch. And that says you want to go this way. In fact, we can emphasize that by putting another block here. And putting another torch here. And that indicates that we want to go up. If I'm if I'm thinking I might be confused by these torches later on, I might leave signs, um, leave notes to myself. But uh, there's loads of different ways of doing it. So let's grab this iron. Lots and lots and lots of iron. In fact, I think I might make some furnaces and start cooking it. Oh, skeleton! Treat with skeletons is to get where they can't see you. If they can't see you, they can't shoot you. And we'll go into a few me different methods of doing that, as in when we run into skeletons. But uh, first of all, let's get this iron. Uh, the redstone at this point is pretty useless. It's up to you whether or not you get it. I'm going to grab some. Because resources are resources. And we're going to start building and storing permanently in the next couple of episodes anyway. So might as well grab it. But in all honesty, until you actually have a need for it, it's fairly useless. So don't go overboard getting it. But there we go. That's giving me plenty of that. Let's get some more iron here. And in fact, I think I'm going to make myself another couple of furnaces at this point. And we'll get this iron smelting because we really need to start turning this into usable items so let's make a couple of furnaces like this and we'll put those down there's no sense in wasting the cobblestone so we'll make sure we pick it up actually let's put that a little bit neater All right um, worth pointing out that uh, furnaces can only be made out of cobblestone. If you have smooth stone, andesite, diorite, things like that, they will not work. So we'll put half of the uh, iron in there. Um, and actually, let's put the whole lot in there. That will be exactly three coal worth. And we'll put the gold in there. There's no real reason to smelt it at this point, but we may as well go ahead and do it anyway. So let's have a quick run around while that is smelting. Pick up any resources we've missed. There's a lot of some more iron there. So let's uh, leave ourselves a little message here. Well, that sounds a little bit rude when you say it that way. I left myself a little message in the middle of the passageway. Oh, I shan't do that again. Let's grab this iron. Okay, that's that quickly. We are actually down far enough now that there's a small chance we could find some diamonds, which would be an excellent find at this start of the game. I'm not going to hold my breath looking for them, but uh, still an excellent opportunity. Right, another lather um, block there. They can be advantageous, but they can also be dangerous. So uh, it's, they also can hide resources as well. So it is often worth getting rid of the lather blocks whenever possible. Ooh, diamond! First things first. Junction there. So cobblestone and torch, and let's go and get this diamond. So plenty of diamond here. 
and we're going to grab it all. In order to dig up diamonds, you need to have an iron pickaxe. Fortunately, we have an iron pickaxe. I can't hear any, but it's often worth being paranoid around diamond. Uh, the last thing you want to do is be merrily digging your diamond away and then finding that there's lava underneath it and you've lost your diamond block. So well, what we're going to do first of all is dig around it. Like I said, I can't hear any lava, but there's no harm in being paranoid. And it's also a good example. So we should dig around it, remembering not to dig down, of course. So it looks like we're only going to get the four blocks of diamond here anyway. We'll dig underneath it just to 100% sure. This has the... Oh, I can actually hear lava, so it might have been worth it after all. So now we have, first of all, four diamond blocks here. And they're levitating, which is always worth it. So there we go. Achievement get diamonds. And that diamond, and that diamond, and that diamond. And let's get out of here. So quick explore over here, just to light this corner up. Nothing of any interest here. Let's get this iron on the way through. So we're going to use all this lovely iron before the end of the episode, which is nearly up, to get ourselves some lovely armor and then with a few minutes remaining oh more gold gold has a number of useful uses in the game and any opportunity you have to find it make a point of doing so it's not as rare as diamond so you don't need to have to be quite as paranoid about it but please uh, please do exercise some caution when and digging it up here there he is so skeletons get so they can't see you like around this corner here and that forces him to come to us if he can there he is so he's trying to path his way to us he's doing it in a very strange way and if you get close to them it's very hard for them to harm you So we'll do the same, we'll duck down here and let him come to us. And close up, not nearly as harmful. Ooh. If you need some food, get some hit points back. Come on. There we go, and get close and finish him off. Hmm. Right, creepers and dead ends don't mix, so let's get away from the creeper. And this is a perfect opportunity to do the other way of dealing with creepers, which I would prefer to have a better weapon for, is to run up close to them and keep them off balance. But of course, the problem is that we're actually short on hit points here, so this may actually end badly. But let's give it a try. And there we go. Run up to it, keep it off balance. It doesn't uh, have enough time to explode, and everybody's happy. The the simple problem, the simple thing here is that if you hit the creeper, it bounces, it resets its explosion counter. All oh, these good things, right? So we have plenty of. Um, iron there and we've dug up plenty more so let's put that in assuming of course we can find it there it is so one two three four and I'll cook that and we'll stick the rest of this gold in eight so it only needs one iron like that we have our four diamonds and we have 24 Iron. Let's eat a bit of food because our hunger bar has gone down. And let's start thinking about what we want to make here. Actually, thinking about this, I just want to illuminate a little bit further down here first. 
so we don't end up with things like that. It's not in a shape to deal with the creeper there. And it would have been even harder if we had been actually crafting it at that point. Oh, loads and loads of stuff down there. This is a really, really good caving system. I think I might spend a bit more time off camera here and get some stuff before moving out. And the next episode will be after moving out. But uh, last things, let's use some of this iron. I think I'm also going to put up some mob barriers. Because we don't want to be disturbed while crafting. So that's going to stop anything walking through that way. So basically just blocking things off not excessively but just loosely some people will go out of their way to make it completely impenetrable and it's actually probably a good idea to do so but I don't want to spend the time doing that so that'll do us for now and let's actually craft some stuff so first things first we don't have a bucket let's make a bucket so have a bucket there um, our pickaxe is wearing down, so let's make ourselves another pickaxe quickly. Oh, I need some sticks for that, so let's make some sticks. Ah, how about you, spider? Let's make some sticks. <laughs> Where's my dirt? Uh, oh, there we go, there's my spruce. Okay, and quick look around. So let's make ourselves another pickaxe. There's our sticks. So we'll have a backup pickaxe there. Um, good opportunity here to make ourselves an iron sword. Better than the stone sword, so we'll have that. There's a skeleton floating around somewhere. We'll probably have to deal with him before we get too far into this. And right, we got our basic equipment, so let's make us hard for a skeleton to see us in there so that's better okay so right we were making armor so rest plate leggings and what do we have let's make ourselves a helmet with the stuff we got left and we were smelting some more iron so let's grab that and Let's make ourselves some boots as well. So we have a complete set of iron armor. Let's put that on quickly. There you go, Damien in tinfoil. Mm, yes. And the last thing I want to do is think about what to do with these diamonds. Now, we might as well make use of them. Um to make a diamond pickaxe uh, diamond pickaxe uh, well actually I'm, I'm, I'm actually leaning against that now because I've just made myself a second iron pickaxe so I'll tell you what what we'll do is we'll hold on to those for a little bit let's pick up these these furnaces and this crafting table take down a bit of our defenses that says go that way that says go that way so we know we are heading up uh, just notice we don't have any torches so let's grab a little bit of this on the way through and we go 
know we've got lots of coal, but no, we are absolutely certain we have lots of coal. This one says go that way, so let's go that way. There's where we got rid of the lava, so there's a, a nice big hole to explore down there. But this one says go that way, and there is in fact a set of stairs that we made there. And if we look over there, there's our little base. So we are back where we are started, but have a quick look at ourselves. We have all sorts of wonderful new toys and a complete set of tin armor. So I, uh, we are in a much, much better state than we are, and we managed to get through a whole 30 minutes without having a creamer drop on our head. So I will probably do a little bit more mining off camera before the next episode because after this what I want to do is start talking about what we want to do now we've got a bit of equipment some supplies so I'm going to be perhaps doing the first build of this series and we'll we'll take it from there so I think we've hit our goals this episode um, the first one was not get destroyed by a creeper we managed that the other one was to get uh, a complete set of iron uh, armor we did that and we got ourselves an iron sword and a bucket as well so i'd say we're about ahead of the game to be totally honest with you oh yes and those diamonds as well which is this point of the game really nice find so i'm gonna leave it there next episode we'll talk about uh builds and a few things to do when making one's first house i've been simon parsons this has been a minecraft the first few days Thank you and good night.